and we welcome Mr. Patrick Burgess and thank you all. Joy Bangla, Joy Bangabandhu. Thank you very much to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs for its graciousness in inviting me here this week. Uh, with great respect to the ministers on the podium, the freedom fighters, and all of the people of Bangladesh who suffered through the events of 1971 and showed the world such incredible courage and inspiration to build this fantastic country out of that experience. So I've been asked to come today and speak to you about how we can spread the knowledge of the genocide in Bangladesh in 1971. And as Mofidul said, I've been involved in that for at least the last 15 years in many places of the world, uh, in New York, in Washington, in Geneva, The Hague, in Jakarta, in Bangkok. I have told those who I'm speaking to about the experience of Bangladesh so that we both know what happened and so we can gather all the information that we have for this one goal that we all have, which we can summarize in two words, never again. This is the work that I do. It's all for that reason, never again. Those of you who experienced 1971, we, we, you will all know in your hearts how important that is, that Bangladesh never goes through that again. And the lessons that Bangladesh has, we can share for the rest of the world. I find myself in a very strange situation as such a young man uh, and being able to say now that I've been working on these issues of genocide and mass atrocity for the past 30 years. Uh, and I've learned a lot from the situation in Bangladesh in relation to what the minister referred to as transitional justice. Some of the leading aspects of Bangladesh in dealing with the mass crimes of 1971, such as the establishment of the International Crimes Tribunal, the 1973 Act, which established the first international court since the Nuremberg trials to deal with international crimes. Now, this is one of the things that lawyers and those chickens and elephants uh, of the international lawyers that I deal with are surprised to hear that Bangladesh was a leader of the world following the Cold War and establishing that tribunal. Similarly, in relation to the recognition of the women victims of the genocide as heroes and providing with a with uh, reparations and recognition formally, as I understand it, in 2017 of the women victims when we are struggling so hard to get that recognition in other places. There are many other examples that I draw on when I'm speaking about Bangladesh experience. One of them springs to mind uh, from Mr. Mofidol Hock's earlier days at the Liberation War Museum when I used to visit and it was that small and I must say, somewhat dusty little office uh, before this magnificent global leader in terms of museums and memorials was built. And one of those programs um, fell into the elements of transitional justice in what we call the truth-seeking quarter, or the truth-seeking element. The tools that we use in dealing with mass atrocities include in basic terms, four elements. The first one, we believe that we need to bring to account those who are most responsible for the mass atrocities. That's why the International Criminal Court has been established. It's why the tribunals were set up for the former Yugoslavia and Rwanda. It's why the International Crimes Tribunal was set up in Dhaka, to try and bring those who were most responsible to justice. That's one quarter. The second one is to uncover the truth and to share that truth as widely as possible so we know what happened, what were the root causes, who were the victims, who were the perpetrators, and perhaps most importantly, what we need to do to make sure it doesn't happen again. 
That's the second element, prosecution, truth-seeking. The third one is reparations for victims. The word reparation is a bit strange, but I remember it as repairing the lives of victims. That's our goal. We can never do that, of course. It's like a cup, a teacup that you take and you smash on the ground and then say, let's put it back together. The life of the victim will never be the same, but we must, according to international law and our own moral obligations, try to do what we can to put the victim's life back together. And Bangladesh has also many lessons to learn. I mentioned the victims of sexual violence. And I raised that example last week, what is it now, 10 days ago in Bangkok, when my organization, Asia Justice and Rights, hosted an event focused on sexual and gender-based violations in conflict. Because in every conflict that I work in, <coughs> women and children are the targets of the violence. The experience of Bangladesh with the estimated 200,000 women victims of rape and sexual assault, with the thousands of babies born as a result, with the mass adoption programs, this is part of the lessons that I do my best to feed into the international experience. Why? So that we know what has happened, because in only in knowing and understanding what has happened can we stop it from happening again. So we have Bangladesh's efforts on prosecution with the International Crimes Tribunal. We have their efforts on truth-seeking. We have their efforts on helping the victims and all of the reforms that have taken place.